the uh, meeting tonight, Town of Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. I'll just go through the agenda quickly um, after we review and approve our minutes and identify the correspondence. Uh, there is an item on the consent agenda, United States Cellular Generator Site Plan Amendment. Under new business, first item is Nedwell Private Access Way Permit. Second item is the Fort Williams Playground Site Plan request for site plan approval. And the third item is the Pond Cove Edition Cape Elizabeth High School renovation site plan. Uh, and that will be a determination of completeness. Tonight, we need to review and approve minutes of both the December 16, 2003 meeting and the January 20th, 2004. If everyone remembers, there was a uh, correction to the December 16th minutes, which were not approved at the last meeting. So if everyone's had an opportunity to review those, uh, I'll hear a motion on the December 16th minutes. Yes, Barbara. May I make a few minor corrections, please? Sure. Okay. On page 7, uh, about halfway down the page, Mrs. Shankle stated the Conservation Commission um, is not standing on ceremony and perhaps the applicant could reconsider putting the trail on the, the applicant should be at, added. The Conservation Commission isn't considering. And on the yep. prior page, When you're ready, Lord. Page six, and this is sort of the after all those one sentence, there's a little paragraph. Um, Mrs. O'Meara stated she met with the applicant's representative. Don't write all this down, but if you can find the section here, it's easier. Just keep them, and then you'll give them back to me. Well, <laughs> maybe you should just, just identify the change so we know. Oh, OK. Um, oh, yeah, I guess I have to, don't I? I'm sorry. Um, the middle of the page, Mrs. O'Meara stated she met with the applicant's representative. The second sentence, she suggested providing an easement over the wetland on the southern side of the K and K lot. It's not of the lot. Right. The K and K lot. Okay. It's minor. Okay. So. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, anyone else have any proposed changes to the minutes? Then uh, the minutes as amended. Do I have motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the minutes as amended. The December 16, 2003 minutes. Correct. Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor? All right. Uh, now we have the January 20th, 2004 minutes that we need to approve. Yes, Barbara. The tiny correction, or two tiny corrections on page five. Um, on the, towards the bottom. Mr. Cotter said that if the district is created, they could put limit. Well, I guess you can leave that one. Never mind that one. Go down to the last, the last paragraph, first sentence. Um, Mrs. Schenkel also wanted to remind the board that two citizens had written later stating their opposition instead of that. All right. That's it. Thank you. Any other changes to the January 20 minutes? We have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion the minutes be accepted as amended. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll identify the correspondence that we've received. Uh, a letter from Monaghan Leahy, town's attorneys, regarding uh, the Nedwell private 
access way permit issue. Uh, a copy of the planning board recommendation to the town council regarding cell tower overlay district. An email from an R. Millette regarding cell towers. Town center intersection improvement study dated December 03. Mixed use article from the January 2004 issue of planning. Memorandum from the fire chief um, Goldrick regarding the Nedwell private access way. A letter from Jay Benson regarding cell towers and planning commissioner's journal for winter 2004. Moving on to the consent agenda. I believe all of you have the materials. United States Cellular Generator Site Plan Amendment. United States Cellular is requesting an amendment to the October 2003 utility building site plan approval to add a generator to the site located at 14 Strout Road. Uh, just to remind the board, if anyone wishes to take this off of the consent agenda to discuss it, uh, please let me know now, otherwise we will vote on this item. Okay. Um, and I would agree that this is appropriate for the consent agenda. Uh, having had an opportunity to review the materials, um, do I have a motion on the request for the amendment? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted, the application of U.S. Cellular to amend an existing site plan to place a generator adjacent to the utility building at the base of the tower on Strout Road be approved as a consent agenda item. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay, and that is approved. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, again, good evening. Uh, thank you for hearing us tonight. Uh, my name is Owens McCullum, a civil engineer with the firm of Sebago Technics here tonight on behalf of Philip and uh, Darlene Nedwell, who are also uh, in the audience tonight in case the planning board had any questions of them. Uh, we're here tonight for a private access way waiver. Uh, we had a chance to uh, meet with the planning board the better part of three months ago, I think at a workshop level. Uh, for the access way. Uh, the Nedwells own property off South, South Street, and uh, this is a plan showing the property. Uh, they currently live in this house right here uh, that has frontage on South Street. Uh, they have obtained and purchased uh, this property next door to it, and would like to build a house over there that they intend <coughs> to live in. Uh, that will require that we extend South Street about um, about 150 feet uh, to get the necessary road frontage that we need. And that does require we go through a private access way. Um, as part of that uh, request, uh, we do need to install a new 8-inch uh, sanitary sewer, which is shown right here. Uh, that is because this lot is not currently served by sewer, and that there is two sewer services uh, that run up South Street right now, a four inch and a six inch service. Uh, Bob Malley at Public Works has requested that we replace those services uh, with one eight inch service. That will require that we install a new sanitary manhole uh, at Stephenson Street uh, where the existing sewer runs through and then we run an eight inch gravity main up the street to uh, provide service to the new house lot. Uh, as that sewer comes up through uh, we will also uh, tie in the existing houses on that street uh, that are served by the 4-inch and the 6-inch sewer so that 
uh, we now bring it up to a more appropriate uh, design of an 8-inch sewer. Uh, the property uh, will include a hammerhead turnaround. Uh, the fire chief and town engineer has recommended that we don't use uh, the turnaround easement as part of the Ned Wells driveway since there is the potential that a vehicle could be parked in that driveway and they've asked that we slide the driveway down um, and make it separate, which we're willing to do. Uh, that's, that's not a problem. Uh, so we will slide that down. Um, as part of the project, um, when they do dig up the street to replace the sewer, uh, they will need to reconstruct uh, the sewer or reconstruct the portion of the road that comes up so the Ned Wells will have their contract to regrade that portion of South Street uh, when you excavate to put in the sewer, you have a tendency to chew up a pretty wide pass, so it will be necessary to regrade that to put the street back to the, uh, uh, the condition it was in. Actually, it will probably be better because it will be regraded with new gravel uh, materials. Uh, with that, tonight we're here for uh, a completeness review on the project. Uh, we did receive the uh, planner's uh, review comments and also the town engineer's uh, comments. Um, those are uh, straightforward. Uh, I think one of the comments was that we needed to include the standard maintenance note absolving the town of any maintenance responsibilities on the plan, which we will certainly add. Um, that's a standard note. Uh, the other item is the turnaround, uh, which we, had, as I indicated, uh, both the uh, town engineer and the fire chief have recommended we move it down and the Nedwells are willing to do that. That will require that I also extend the road about another 75 feet to provide the turnaround. Uh, the land is there to do it, so uh, we will certainly uh, accomplish that. Uh, the town engineer's uh, review letter uh, had some uh, miscellaneous items on it. They asked that some additional notes be added to it, uh, to the plan indicating that um, it has to be, the sewer service connections have to be installed uh, uh, witnessed by public works officials and it has to be in compliance with the sewer ordinance which we will also do. I will add notation to the plan uh, requiring that. Um, in addition, um, there was a, on the private way plan, the town engineer noted that on the lower end uh, we had reversed an invert elevation which we will change for the final plan. Um, that is not a problem. Uh, we have added notation to the plan regarding the water service. Uh, the new house is proposed to be serviced by uh, private well on that parcel. Uh, another comment the town engineer had is the sanitary, the cover that goes over the sanitary manhole. They, the town has a very specific uh, frame and cover they like to use. So we will revise the plan to reference that specific frame and cover that goes on it. Um, the board, uh, Maureen O'Mara also just provided us with a letter from Mike Hill. The town council has reviewed the private way maintenance agreement. As Since this is a private access way, uh, the applicants will have to have a private way maintenance agreement. Uh, there's been some suggestions in there to change some language around um, showing, referencing the existing private way maintenance, or the existing maintenance agreement for South Street and identifying that the Ned Wells would be responsible for maintenance of this, their errors or signs, and we will certainly make those revisions to the, the private way uh, maintenance agreement. Uh, with that, we're here tonight to try to answer any questions and hopefully move forward with the project. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just remind the board that our first uh, issue with this application is one of completeness, so we should confine our discussion and questions to that issue first and foremost. If anyone has any comments or questions of the applicant on completeness? Mr. Chairman, it appears that they've addressed the, the only issue that was raised by the town planner in the memorandum, so I'd be prepared to make a motion unless there's any other discussion by the other board members. Anyone else have any issues on completeness for you? Is there anything from the letter? Okay. Yeah, motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, 
the application of Philip and Darlene Nedwell for a private access way permit for a lot located at 5 South Street, uh, U29-51D, be deemed complete. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Okay. The application has been deemed complete. Uh, we can discuss uh, the application, although, Mr. McCullough, I would tell you that given the fact that it appears you will be submitting additional materials and, in fact, a com completely new design, um, we would be inclined to table this to next month's meeting for discussion and substantive review. Uh, we also should discuss and decide if we want to schedule either a site walk and or a public hearing on this. Does anyone have any thoughts? Barbara? Maureen, has there been any uh, anybody contact you about this? In the last 30 days, no. Um, during the workshop, there is some very, there was some, the neighbors are very interested in this. I would be, uh, I would recommend that the board schedule a public hearing. And I think we should have one. Since we're going to be having this set up for the hearing next month, it seems to make sense to have the public hearing then anyway. I don't see the need, though, for a site walk in this particular application. Anybody see the need for a site walk? Um, I, I agree. I think there should be a public hearing on this application, and uh, obviously we need to review the materials, the additional materials that will come in uh, on the application. So unless anybody has any further questions tonight, yes, Mark? I have one. I think there's an error on the plans. Okay. And you have... Um, Item number three, and under general notes, you say this is in the RC zone, and then you describe it as minimum lot size of 80,000 square feet. That's not correct. Okay. I'll have to take a look at that. Um, and also the frontage wouldn't be correct either. Ms. Schenkel is correct. The minimum lot size in the RC district is 20,000 square feet. I got it four times that, so we'll have to fix the that. The VRA district standard. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to do this if that That's was the RA district. And also, I believe the minimum street frontage in the uh, RC district is 100 feet. Correct. And then these would be non-conforming lots, so the side yard minimum rear would be 10 and the minimum side would be 15. I just think it should be correct. On Absolutely. Place. Thank you for pointing that out. You're welcome. Thank you, Barbara. Any other questions? Okay, do I have a motion? Sure, I have another motion for the board to consider. Be it further ordered that the above application be tabled to the regular March 16, 2004 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Thank, Thank you. you. See you in March. See you next month. <laughs> next item on the agenda is the Fort Williams Playground Site Plan. Good evening, Mr. Carroll. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, just go right into this? Or? Yes, why don't you? We first have to review. Yeah, um, go ahead, Maureen. I just wanted to uh, 
point out to the Board that uh, in my memo, I suggested that topography information was not submitted. Mr. Carroll very politely called me this afternoon and pointed out on landscaping and grading plan L3 that topography has been submitted, and I just wanted to apologize for that so that under the completeness item, number eight, uh, topography information has been submitted. Thank you. With that amendment, Great. go right ahead. Good. Uh, my name is Patrick Carroll. I'm here tonight representing the town of Cape Elizabeth on their quest for a uh, playground in Fort Williams. And uh, we've been working with uh, this playground committee for well over a couple of years now on this. And uh, it looks like we're finally getting close to being at fruition. Uh, the playground itself will be located within the park. It's uh, in an area of the park that um, is kind of, I call it probably the south central part of the park. Um, if, you, if, if you orient yourself on this drawing here, Shore Road is over here about 450 feet or so uh, from, the, from the site. There are two existing buildings from the fort that you can see from, from Shore Road. Uh, those are these two buildings right here. If you're familiar with that site, there's a long kind of garage building that, that forms the south side of this area. And then there are several park maintenance buildings. These are existing buildings from the fort that are utilized by the, by the Park and Recreation Department. Uh, they store baseball equipment in there, and there's some parks uh, maintenance and uh, equipment storage. Uh, it's really a pretty nice area of the site. There's a, there's a series of very large, mature oak trees on the site. Uh, Bob Malley and his crew went in last year and did some pretty heavy pruning of those trees, so those trees are all very healthy. I think they removed, I think, three trees that were in this area that, that weren't doing so well. Uh, it was identified very early on as a potential site for a playground. It's in a, kind of a tucked away part of the park. It's not in the active kind of recreation part. Um, it's got great views. You can actually see uh, Portland Headlight and Ram Island Light from here. So it's probably one of the only playgrounds in the country that's got a view of two uh, two. Um, headlights. So um, it's a very nice spot, and this is actually the site of the original um, officers' club for when back when Fort Williams was actually an active military operation. So we thought it again was uh, in keeping with the history of the fort to go from a playground for the officers to a playground <laughs> for children. Um, the site is laid out such that there's an existing gravel parking area here that will remain. The main road comes in here. This is Humphreys Road, comes into the site and accesses these two buildings back in here in this parking lot. Um, the intent would be to take this area and develop it as a very kind of secure and safe place for kids. So we've got a very simple form here. This is a circle that will be located in the site. Uh, there'll be access to this parking area from here. It'll come in. Uh, there's a small little plaza here, and the playground committee is working right now on, on a brick program where they're going to try to sell uh, donor bricks and create a little plaza here for those, for those donors. Uh, there'll be a couple of benches and so forth. And then this pathway winds in around the play area and then back out to connect with existing other pathways within the fort. Um, this will all be handicap accessible. There'll be an ADA accessible picnic table will be located here, and uh, and the play equipment itself will be will be accessible. So we see it as a very nice spot. This this playground is actually envisioned. It's it's really part three of the playground um, work that began several years ago with uh, Pond Cove School, the middle school, and this is really the third component of that. This playground is really geared towards the younger kids in the community, whereas Pond Cove and the middle school were geared towards from 5 through 10 or 11 or 12. This is really geared towards those preschool kids. The thought was that uh, this gives local mothers and uh, residents a place to go during the school day when they're maybe a little uncomfortable going up to the school playgrounds with their children. Um, it's also an area that, uh, if you're familiar with Fort Williams, there's quite a bit of walking that occurs through here. So the thought was that we pr provide pathways and benches and so forth. It's a really a nice shady area. Um, so we think it, it'll really get a lot of use both from younger kids and also from uh, older walkers as they kind of uh, walk around and, and visit areas of the park. 
Uh, the idea is this, this is a circle in here. The playground equipment would be located within that circle. Uh, similar to the other playgrounds in town, there'll be an edging around here, and this will be filled with a resilient surface, about 10 or 12 inches of wood chips. Um, currently, we're showing a series of playground equipment, a couple of climbing structures, some swings, um, seesaws, and, and some other components. Um, we've been working with a playground consultant on this, a playground company, and um, we think that, that the elements and the activities that we have shown are, are really what we want. Um, however, because of the grant that the town received for this playground work, we've got to go out to competitive bidding. And so, while we can specify the number of components and the type of components and so forth, it may not exactly end up looking exactly like this. Um, but, uh, but it will fit within this area. We're confident of that. We think we have the adequate space in here. And uh, it will contain these components. And uh, one, of the, one of the key features on this that I think is kind of unique is that uh, we really want this climbing structure to somehow resemble a boat, because that's really part of kind of the character of Cape Elizabeth. And so right now, the way this is designed, there's actually a, a bow that comes out of, the, uh, out of the ground and becomes part of the climbing structure for the kids. And I think there's actually a couple of smokestacks or something. Um, that's kind of conceptually where we're headed. Uh, I think we'll, uh, the intent would be to, to go out to bid this spring and hopefully have this done for use by residents and visitors this summer sometime. Um, from a drainage point of view, we are, we are providing some under drainage around this uh, playground area just to keep it from uh, ponding up with water. Uh, that will pipe over into an existing catch basin, which is within the, the uh, gravel parking lot here. And nobody at, at the town seems to know where this goes from here, but um, I sat down with Bob Malley the other day to talk about how we're going to bid this out, and he indicated to me he's never had a problem with that drain, and it's always, some, somehow or other, water always goes away from there. So um, he doesn't seem too concerned about it. I know that uh, in the letter from the town engineer, he made reference that uh, we really need to be working with public works. And, and I think actually part of this work will actually probably be done by public works crews. Um, that's part of the, the uh, uh, idea behind the matching funding for the, uh, for the grant. Um, the existing trees will be preserved. And I know there was a comment from Maureen and also I think from the town engineer on a tree preservation plan. Um, typically, we would put that together on, in our set of construction documents and specifications, but I'm more than willing to uh, either add some notes to this drawing or add a memo to the file that uh, typically discusses what we would do, which uh, generally we would, in areas where uh, we're really, we know we're not going to be anywhere close to the trees, we would set up fencing on the, at the drip line. And some of these areas here where the trees are going to be pretty close to where construction activity will occur, uh, we'll make sure that no materials are stored on there and minimal damage is done to roots and any exposed roots have to be hand pruned. And, and uh, there's, there's a whole series of kind of uh, requirements that we typically try to maintain. So we're more than willing to do that. Uh, the last component we have here, two items. One is landscaping and we're providing a series of uh, evergreen trees in this area, some flowering trees here, so as you drive in, you've got a kind of a focus here, and some a mixture of shrubs along this edge and along this edge. And, and really, a, a lot of that landscaping is really there just to try to minimize or prevent, discourage kids from kind of running out through here and out into the road. We're also providing a, a, a four-foot chain-link fence that wraps around from this existing tree around the corner and down with a gate across this area. So again, that will discourage uh, through traffic through here, which currently exists, and it dis should discourage kids from kind of darting out into the road. So we think it's a, it's a pretty safe area and uh, welcome addition to the town and the park. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Uh, again, to remind the board, the first issue we have to consider is one of completeness, so uh, limiting our 
questions and comments to that issue first. Uh, if anyone has any questions. I just have a question for the town planner. When in the memo, there's a mention of a preservation plan. We've heard an oral plan. Is it typical that we would have something in writing for you to review? Um, we would we would ask that something be added to the plan, but it's not unusual for something like that to be placed as a condition of approval. Okay. Yes, Barbara. I'd like to offer a motion for the board to consider. Go right ahead. Um, motion for completeness. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth to construct a playground in the Southwest Preserve area of Fort Williams Park located on Shore Road be deemed complete. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? And that's approved. Um, Mr. Carroll, can you give us an idea of what the schedule is for construction and how you at least would like to proceed on this? Well, we'd like to proceed as soon as possible. Um, we, um, when I sat down with Bob Malley, we kind of laid out a strategy for how we're going to approach the site work, and, and a lot of that's going to be done either with uh, town equipment or through kind of uh, contracting with some local contractors. Um, the playground equipment itself has the longest lead time, and that typically takes six to eight to ten weeks sometimes from the time the equipment is ordered until it, until it arrives and can be installed. So uh, backing up from kind of if we say we get approval tonight, which would be great, uh, we'll put together a set of specifications. Uh, the playground committee is going to have to, again, kind of review those, and then we'll get that out on the street as a bid package, and they'll probably need three weeks or so to, to receive that back. Um, ideally, I think, you know, June would be probably a good time to shoot for for this, but, um, you know, depending on the, on the length of time it takes for the equipment, it, it might be earlier or it might be later than that, but that's okay. you know, what we're shooting for. Um, I guess I'd like the board to consider, obviously the first thing we need to consider is whether we think it's necessary to have a, a public hearing, which obviously would put this over to the next month. Um, Maureen, has there been any uh, interest expressed or calls or opposition that you've none. heard? None. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on that, Barbara? Well, because there's been a town committee involved in developing this, at least it's my opinion that I don't think we do need a public hearing if we haven't had any response at all from anybody. It, it's not as though people perhaps haven't heard that this is happening. Not everybody, but maybe some people have. Mm -hmm. Just to add to that, as part of the approval of the master plan for Fort Williams, there was a great deal of discussion about where the playground might be located. I think that's would be the key issue for any abutters, and that issue has already uh, been raised and uh, subject of a public hearing prior to today. So I, I agree with Barbara. I'm not sure we need a public hearing. Anyone else? I, uh, I, I tend to agree as well. I, I think the committee's done a great job, and um, Mr. Carroll's done a great job with the design. There's been a lot of opportunity for input and discussion, so. Uh, I would agree too that we should consider this uh, tonight. So on that basis then, if anyone has questions on the application, uh, why don't we move forward to consideration of the application. Some of the issues, I think, have already been addressed regarding the drainage, and uh, obviously there are no issues regarding traffic or pedestrian traffic, which really won't change. Um, yeah, I, I should mention just how this is being funded, um, if, if there's any interest in that. Sure. Um, uh, the committee, actually through Tina, I think, mostly, uh, put together an application with the uh, 
the uh, Department of Conservation through their Land and Water Conservation Fund uh, and was awarded a grant of, I believe, $45,000 45, uh, to go as a matching grant towards whatever the town contributes on this. The, the total budget on this is right around 90000 I believe. And I think, uh, I think about a year ago, the Fort Williams Committee uh, dedicated, I believe, up to $70,000 of, of their funding uh, that they had set aside specifically for projects within the park for this. So between the two of those, I think we've got, you know, we're still shooting for $90,000, but that just means that more money can go back to the town or stay in the in the uh, Fort Wayne's budget for this. So there's there's no additional money that's that's required. There's no um, you know increase in taxes or a referendum or anything like that that's going to require um, any additional money for that. And then in addition to that, I think with with this brick donor program and so forth, the idea that perhaps we can get some benches donated or purchased that uh, would, again, add to the value of this and, and hold some of that money back for the Fort Williams budget. Well, it's always good to hear. Uh, David? Uh, I just noted in the uh, town planner's memo, there is a reference to whether or not parking, there would need to be some type of uh, parking uh, on this plan, though I tend to agree with the town planner's conclusion that since there are no employees involved, that additional parking spaces would not be necessary. And I just float that out there for the, the rest of the board. I don't know if anybody else has a concern in that regard. We took a look at parking, and um, this gravel parking area in here, currently, you know, it's not really well defined, and there are, there are no dedicated spaces. But if you start laying out how people would, would use that, you can get about 20 spaces in there. Uh, there are also other parking areas. There's there's this area in here which is currently paved. Um, I think on weekends now people tend to park here when they walk their dogs down through the field. And there's another parking area that's over here that, that again gets utilized on the weekends. Um, this area back in here is, is currently where uh, public works tends to store a lot of materials and so forth. Um, but again, you know, there there would be parking available there. So we think there's plenty of parking, and um, other than the days when, in the spring, when, when everybody's playing double-A baseball over here in this field, um, I don't see, you know, that this parking would ever get stressed out and taxed. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree that there's, there's certainly plenty of parking. It's really a matter of how far one could park away, but they're still parking within Fort Williams, so I don't see that as a problem. Other questions from the board about the application? Uh, I'd like to commend the committee and, and Mr. Carroll as well on the, the design and thought that went into this project. Uh, I think it's going to be a great addition and the fact that uh, it's been funded as an added bonus as well, so uh, I think he did a, a great job. Um, so, unless there are any other questions, do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion for the board to consider. <clears throat> Motion for approval, findings of fact. The town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting site plan review to construct a playground in the southwest preserve area of Fort Williams, which requires site plan review under section 19-9. Number two, the project will utilize existing under drain systems and landscaping as part of the project design. Number three, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it audited based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth to construct a playground in the southwest preserve area of Fort Williams Park, located on Shore Road, be approved with the following conditions. That the contractor work, number one, that the contractor work with the Department of Public Works regarding connection to underdrain systems, and number two, that the applicant prepare a landscape preservation plan. Okay. Moved and seconded, Mr. Chair. But just with respect to condition number two, I would propose that we add a clause uh, that the preservation plan that it be acceptable to the town planner. 
if you just read this on its face, all they have to do is uh, prepare a preservation plan. There ought to be some sort of safeguard in there. I agree uh, with the amendment. Okay, that's a good point. Okay, do we have a second for the motion as amended? Second. All right. All in favor? All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Greer. For the delight. My name is Tom Greer from Pinkman Greer. With me tonight is Bob Howell from HKTA, representing the town of Cape Elizabeth and the school department. Um, what I would like to do is sort of give the planning board an update as to where we are since they've seen the plans uh, prior to the referendum. Uh, since that time, we've been able to bring the design forward, make some improvements in the plan, which I think are going to make it much, much nicer and much better. Um, and then we can go through the completeness uh, portion right. of it. Okay, but before we go through that, um, I believe Mr. Sherman has to uh, address the board. Uh, yes, uh, my law firm represents the Cape Elizabeth School Department, so I believe I will have to recuse myself from consideration of this application. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Sherman. I'm sorry, Mr. Greer, go ahead. That's fine. Um, what I'd like you to do on the aerial photograph is sort of give you an idea of the, the places on the site that we're going to be working. And then as uh, I'm, then I'm going to go through a series of drawings that sort of shows each one of those areas in a little more detail. I'm going to leave this drawing up so that if you want to know exactly where we are on site, you'll be able to coordinate the two drawings. Um, the referendum allowed us to do several things. Uh, one of them was to change the entrance to the school as you come into it. This is a little bit low. Um, we go. Try that. The, uh, we're going to improve the entrance to the site as you come in along here. We're going to widen the uh, entrance out and have a couple of exit lanes as well as a wider entrance lane that comes in. We're going to modify the end of the parking lot as, as it enters here. We're going to remove the existing circle and then we're going to change the plaza area in front of the school and change the traffic flow around in this area in here. 
At the same time, we're also going to provide a drop-off lane and then an access road that goes down to the uh, gymnasium. The plans that you have shows a, shows a walkway down here after meeting with the fire chief. Um, he wanted an access lane, so we've changed that, and I'll go through that on, in more detail in one of the smaller plans. Um, we've uh, changed the parking lot, which I think is an improvement from the last plan we have. We're going to add additional parking spaces around the existing student lot. If you recall from the workshop area, we had those parking spaces placed along this access road here. Um, I think this is going to work much better than, than along this access road. That was one of the, one of the improvements that I, I liked as part of this, this new plan. We're also going to be adding parking down in the, in the back here. And we've changed the layout of this, which I think is, is a much nicer and a little more elegant layout than what we had in the past. If you recall, on the original plan, we had a block of parking that came back off the, off the driveway with a single entrance. What we've done is we've created a half moon circle uh, parking that allows you to come back in and out and parking across the end of the building. We'll also be adding an area here shown in purple with a little small plaza where the cafeteria gets bumped out. We're adding about 1,500 square feet or so and adding a small plaza there. And we're adding a walkway that goes between the um, lower parking lot here and the upper parking lot with some stairs to facilitate a little bit more pedestrian uh, access in that location. And we're also adding on to Pond Cove School, this purple uh, addition here, and changing the walkway as, as it comes around it. The Pond Cove School addition, which we've shown on this drawing here, is the is the first project that we're going to go under construction. Uh, that is scheduled to go out to bid here in a couple of months, receiving bids uh, in, in near the end of April, and then begin construction almost immediately if we can, can work out all of the permit process and all of the details for the drawing. That's, that project is going to be done under a separate construction contract and will be, will be again, as I said, the lead. The remaining portions of the school, the renovations of the school, and the site work around it, that's going to be done as a construction management project, and those projects will, will be completed. The design will be complete in July, at which time we'll begin construction near the end of the summer. The site work on that project, um, the improving the athletic fields, the parking lot, that is scheduled to be done in 2005, not this summer. So there's a little change in schedule here to, to accommodate uh, making sure the renovation budget stays on budget, and then when we go to do the outside fields and that type of thing, we want to make sure we have enough money left to do the entire entire project. The Pond Cove School addition is fairly simple. We're, we're building a wing that, that comes out that's a single-story wing that will have uh, four classrooms in it, some teacher space, some restrooms, that type of thing. All of the utilities for this project will be extended from the existing building, so there will be no uh, exterior sewer lines or water lines or that type of thing that we have to deal with. We are reconstructing the walkway. It currently runs down along the side of the building and what we're doing is bringing it out around the end of the wing and bringing it back. Uh, the width of the walkway is going to be increased to be eight feet wide um, and that will allow it to be plowed with a, with a pickup truck and, uh, and maintained. And um, we're adding some gravel shoulders to it to accommodate the fire chief's request to make sure we have gravel wider than the eight feet so he can get his vehicles in and around it. Since your plan was done, um, we've met with the town staff and through review of the codes, we've actually added a doorway uh, in this location over here. Um, your plan showed just a single doorway in this location. Um, so we've added a walkway that comes back out around in this area again um, as a matter of uh, egress out of the building. So the, the landscaping has changed a little bit in that area to accommodate it. And we've added a, a catch basin in this area to make sure we, we collect all of the water. We are redoing the storm drain in this area. Currently it runs parallel to the building all the way along the edge. And what we're doing is putting a basin in here and bringing it out and around the building. Essentially there's very little change in the amount of stormwater runoff, uh, but again we need to accommodate the existing drainage in that area. Uh, the walkway itself will have an embankment on the back side. Uh, after meeting with Public Works, uh, they would prefer to see a grass embankment that comes around here so that we'll blend from the walkway to a grass area 
back up to the playground area in, in this particular location. And I believe this was uh, recently before the board, uh, roughly a year ago. The landscaping that we've shown here um, are generally trees. In reviewing it with town staff and, uh, and the like, uh, adding landscaping uh, was to add trees, not bushes. So that's what we've done to accommodate that. The smaller circles here are, are more of a shorter type tree, where the, the larger circles here are a larger uh, type tree to provide some shade and, and entrance um, park area. The next area I'd like to review is the uh, entrance driveway itself go through some of the improvements along the driveway. Um, this is the uh, Route 77 uh, area in here. As you come in, we're adding a small concrete island that will be flush surface just to give you a visual break as you come in. And that will be four feet wide. Um, when we have a 15 foot wide entrance to allow buses to come in and make the turn. We'll be putting a new curb all the way along the right hand side of it and providing an esplanade uh, roughly five feet wide between the existing sidewalk and the, and the access road. So there'll be some, some extra space in there for pedestrians. We will be overlaying the existing sidewalk to give it a new surface as, as you come in on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we're going to preserve a small strip of the existing paving and overlay that so there'll be a sidewalk that also comes along the left hand side. And in between the uh, uh, new pavement and the sidewalk there will be again another esplanade, a small swale that will run down to a catch basin in this location. As you come further on to the site, we'll accommodate the entrance to the community center and then you come down to the to the end of the of the driveway itself where there's currently a, a circular um, area that you can drive around the circle. We're removing the circle and at this point you can turn left and we'll go down around the existing traffic island and then come back up through the parking in order to get in and out. Or you can take a right and head to the back of the site with this, this radius in through here. So there will be another, again, another island in this area that will be opened up in order to control traffic. And there will be a stop sign at the end of that. As you get to the end of this, we've increased the length of a bus drop-off or parent drop-off uh, along the front of the school building so that there will be an extra lane there that you'll be able to pull over and, and park. And then from there up, we'll be putting in a new plaza area in through here. This plaza area right now is envisioned as a concrete area that will go back uh, to approximately uh, 15 or 20 feet from the, from, the, from the building. At that point, there'll be a series of stairs. This is a little different than what's shown on your plan uh, in going through the codes and working with the building committee. In the original plans that you have, we anticipated a lift on the inside of the building by putting the stairs on the outside of the building. Um, we've been able to eliminate that lift and we meet the uh, ADA access requirements by providing a sidewalk that will connect the lower plaza with the upper plaza along this route in here. Uh, that route will also be likely to be used by students parking in the in the student parking lot if they have to come to the main entrance. Again, that makes easy access along the edge of the building back up into the main entrance, which we think is a, is a benefit. Um, the stairs themselves, we think are going to provide a very nice plaza area, uh, a place to sit. Uh, we've also added some low bench walls that will provide some opportunity to sit on both sides of the plaza and, and, and talk back across the plaza itself. The entrance itself is, is, Bob will go through a little bit of the architectural design. It's approximately a thousand feet, square feet that we're bumping out and going to give it a little more presence so that you know that that's the main entrance when you drive in the, in the access drive. We are going to re-landscape this area. This area does have a few small shrubs on the sides to give it some edges and then some larger trees to, to uh, really give you some, some presence, some more campus type atmosphere. We'll also be reconstructing the walkways uh, back in here, back down to the student parking lot um, across the end of, the, of this the wing that comes along that edge. The end of the parking lots, we do add a few parking spaces into here. 
as we changed the, the dual access drives that were in here, this provided an opportunity to add some additional parking spaces in, in that particular area. This is the student parking lot area. Um, what we've done here is the original parking lot is shown here in white, sort of across the middle of it. What we're doing is we're extending on both sides in order to get double loaded parking, essentially doubling the number of parking spaces, not quite doubling the number of parking spaces that we can add to it. And we'll still have the same entrance in and off the, off the access road that will come in here and you'll be able to loop around through it. We're adding uh, some island dividers in the middle of it as well as around the outside edge. Um, that complies with the uh, uh, landscaped island every 10 spaces of the, of the ordinance. The issues here became one, this is the back of the ball field, where we're cutting into this back of slope and making that approximately two to one and providing a snow shelf, working with public works, they wanted a snow shelf on this back side of it. Um, exactly what's the finish on that two to one slope is still open to the discussion with, with the public works. We're looking for a vegetation that um, really doesn't have to be maintained or mowed, and whether that's a, a crown vetch uh, type material or whether it's something different at this point. We're still, we're still working with public works to come up with a solution to that. This, this parking lot will have a closed drainage system and through here and an oil grit separator to provide stormwater quality enhancement. As you know, this project, this is a site location of development project under DEP's guidelines, and we're looking to do stormwater quality enhancement, and this particular parking lot gets collected here and treated, and it discharges into the existing storm drain swale. Uh, again, we've added some large overstory trees in order to provide shading for this particular parking lot. There are existing uh, overhead lights that are in it, in this parking lot now that, that light it, and what we're going to do is relocate those out to the edge and provide, again, uh, lighting for, the, for this particular parking lot. <coughs> this sort of covers, this drawing covers two areas. Uh, the first area that we're looking at is the cafeteria in the back of the, of the site. As you come in the main entrance, you go all the way around the building and the cafeteria is on the back side. We're adding approximately 1,500 square feet of additional cafeteria space as it comes out. From the outside, what we're going to do is add a walkway that will come out the center of it and provide access back out into the parking lot. <clears throat> and then off to each side, there'll be some squares that will provide uh, spaces for some picnic tables that are there currently. We'll be putting those on a concrete square with grass squares in between. <coughs> Again, we're going to add some landscaping to this particular area to give it a little softer touch to it and begin to make it feel more like a campus instead of a, a, an open field area. I think the improvements back here, although they're relatively simple, I think it's going to create a great place for student gathering and, and the like right from the, from the cafeteria itself. I think the utilization of this area by students is going to be much improved with this particular design, and it's a fairly simple design to, to work with. The other area that we're looking at on this morning is the access down to the gymnasium. Currently, um, there is an access road down through to the gymnasium entrance on this side, but there's no ADA access uh, for, for pedestrians. What we're going to be doing is adding a sidewalk that comes along into this section. This section will have handrails and then we'll continue the sidewalk back down into the, to the um, gymnasium area, the front entrance. Um, in our original design, we had a switchback walkway with some stairs in there that was a lot more elaborate. I think this is a cleaner, neater, simpler design solution to it. And again, I think this is a, another step forward in the, in the evolution of the design. The fire chief wanted to be able to continue to get rescue vehicles down there and we've provided a relatively large radius for him to be able to get down to this area with rescue vehicles. They don't necessarily go to the gym entrance. Uh, they also use this to drive along the side of the gym, and if there's an injured person on the field, they use this route to get to the athletic field to bring, to bring uh, injured guards off 
So I think this is a, again a critical piece to it, and, and again a little step forward in the in the design that we had. This is also a storm drain that comes across here, and we've been working with Public Works on that. Uh, the drainage that's on site now, with a few minor modifications that we have on the plans that, that you have, uh, are adequate for our purposes. Uh, but the town is going to do some drainage improvements along Route 77, and Public Works has asked us to look at upgrading the size of these pipes down through the site, so that if we ought to upgrade them as, as now, as this project goes forward, so that we don't have to go back and tear up the new pavement and put a bigger pipe in. And we're going to accommodate that on the, on the design drawings. Um, there's still some discussion as to exactly who's going to pay for that, but um, um, we think it's a reasonable request and our drawings will come through with, with, a, with a larger pipe at this point. last area that we're dealing with is out behind the school, the very back of the school. Uh, this drawing shows the, the area that is the existing soccer field is generally in this area right through here. The width of the soccer field meets the current regulations, 75 yards wide, um, but it's too short to be a regulation field. And what we'll be doing is increasing the length of it uh, by approximately 25% in order to make it a regulation playing field in, in both directions. Uh, there is a 20-foot wide, fairly flat area that we've included all the way around it for pedestrian, uh, pedestrians to stand, teams to, to stand, and to be able to give corner kicks and that's enough room for, for the field area itself. The field itself is currently um, uh, about 25 to 3% grade going across it. In order to make it a, a better playing field, we're going to flatten it out so that if there's a 1% grade going across it, that requires putting in four to five feet of fill on the, the low side of it. And then by the time we get back up to the, the high side of the field, this, this edge along here, we match back into the existing grades pretty well. We're doing a cut along the back side here to cut into the, into the embankment. That material will get used to do some of the fill and the excess material that we have from the other construction projects that we're doing around the site will also be used down here um, where appropriate for, for that fill. Again, trying to balance out those materials. In order to do this, um, we have to make some storm drainage changes. There is currently an open swale that starts about where the access to the tennis court is and runs down along this side of the field. We're going to be enclosing that swale uh, and using a pipe to pipe the storm water man all the way down to the existing head wall that's there now and putting in a structure and an emergency overflow pipe at the end of the field. That coordinates with the design of the parking lot as the parking lot comes in and around. We'll be relaying a small section of that pipe up in here to make sure there's enough cover over it and tying in the drainage that comes across the field into that existing drainage. Another change that we had to make from the plans that you see to what's, what's going to be the final plan will be the storm drainage for this parking lot. Um, again, we're looking at water quality enhancement by putting in an oil grit separator in this location. We originally, on your plans, showed that tying into this uh, manhole here. Um, there's a 16-inch sewer force main that runs through here. Both of those pipes wanted to occupy the same space. So in order to avoid that conflict, we're going to reuse the existing drainage pipe that goes across the ball field. So the outlet of that oil grit separator will continue to use the 12 inch pipe that goes across the ball field now. Um, again, I think that's a minor change, but it is a change to see. Uh, the landscape plan, again, was using large trees to create an alleyway uh, that, that you see on the existing road as it comes through and begin to add some landscaping to the, to the parking lot itself. Um, we think this is going to be a good addition that you'll be able to uh, uh, sit and watch the, the ball game from the, from the uh, parking lot. It'll be slightly above it. There's a three to one slope that runs down to it. And, uh, that's a pretty good improvement. We're also adding a walkway that comes from the handicapped spaces here along the edge of the existing road back to this corner where you'll have access to the field. You'll be at the same elevation here. So this will give you a route to, to be able to get out onto the field. 
there's some existing scoreboards on the far side of it. Those will be um, have new foundations and brought up. Essentially, we're putting five feet of fill around them, and we need to bring them up in order to to make them serviceable. The parking lot on this side again has two entrances in and out that line up with the other two uh, on the opposite side of the road, and we'll be providing parking, uh, double loaded parking on both sides there. Uh, the public works director has asked us to change the type of curb along here uh, to one that's that's similar to the rest of the curb we've used, and we'll do that as part of the uh, the next set of plans. It's a fairly, uh, you know, I think, a much better design than what was originally before you in the in the uh, workshop area. We're also doing some utility improvements on this project, uh, starting at the front entrance. We'll be putting in a, a new fire main that's, that will go into the building in order for it to be sprinkled. We're adding a hydrant out front and running a, a eight inch line around the back of the building and are providing two hydrants here in the back of the building at the request of the fire chief in order to provide better fire protection around the building. <coughs> Excuse me. At the same time, um, there is an existing line that's uh, fairly small that services the irrigation system on the field, and we'll be uh, upgrading that with a, new, with a new service line and redoing the irrigation system on the field as we redo it. Obviously, those, uh, those heads can be redone. With that, I think that's a pretty good overview of it. I'll let um, Bob review some of the architectural changes. And Thank you, Mr. Fair. Good evening. I'm Robert Howe with HKTA Architects, and I want to briefly review the architectural components of this project. Um, as you probably know, there's a large amount of renovations and retrofitting that's going on in this uh, attempt to modernize um, a 35-year-old building, um, with two exceptions, and that is we are putting two small additions onto the building. Otherwise, it's really an internal gut job in some places. Other places, it's a uh, cosmetics. Some places it's mechanical concern. Other places it's wholesale telecommunication issues. It's really a um, whole series of um, kind of tailor-made um, solutions to antiquated systems. Um, but those two additions are, um, are, are rendered here. And Tom talked about the new entrance, uh, and that's on the left here, and uh, a cafeteria. Uh, addition, and that's on the right. Um, in the at the addition, as you can see here, this would be the new approach to um, the front door. One of the missions of this project has always been to um, the building committee and its the study committee has always said we need something that announces this building a little better than we have now. Right now, we have essentially. Uh, you get off the road, there's a goat path to the front door, and the front door is kind of small and tight, and, and there's not much that says this is the front door of a pretty good school. And uh, the effort here has been to kind of give that whole sense of arrival, that place in front of the building, a, a sense of place and a gathering spot, which is it's used now but it, as a gathering spot, but it's not well defined, and the grass, as you know, uh, may know is pretty abused in that area and um, it's um, uh, well worn. In plan then, this is the drop off area that Tom was talking about in the front. Um, the, the whole area here is being lowered so we have handicap accessibility and then about midway up here um, we are greeted with a set of stairs that get you up to the existing level. Uh, this diag these diagrams don't show that new walkway system that Tom talked about but um, they are going to be more, uh, that's going to be more fully developed by taking a route out along the edge of the building and then back up to the upper level. So it's a two-tier plaza, a fairly large um, uh, set of uh, four steps, uh, five steps in the middle um, with a, a gathering space at the lower level and then the upper level also uh, above the steps just before you get into the front door. 
So this gives you a sense of that. That new front component is really a way to uh, announce the building, as I said, but it's also going to include slightly enlarged administration area, and that stays on your right, and guidance will come out of the uh, middle of the building and towards on, the front on the left. So as you come into the building, uh, administration stays on your right, and guidance will be on your left. This is going to be treated as illustrated in, as we start to illustrate it in, that, in those schemes. Now, the building committee has been working through these things. We've talked about various um, issues around this, whether how we might get in the building. We've also talked about signage. We haven't resolved that, whether we have Cape Elizabeth High School across the top, is it across this canopy in the front? Those issues are being uh, grappled with, and uh, I don't think there's a consensus yet on, on what that will be. But one of the design features we're working through is how to, how to announce this building uh, with signage. In the back, uh, if you're familiar with the getting into the cafeteria, you usually get into it from the inside, but the exterior doors are used a lot, um, not only for school functions, but after school functions. Those doors are always open, and you're coming and going, you're stepping into mud. Uh, it's a good eight or nine inch step out of the door. Um, there are picnic tables there, or there aren't dirt. Um, it's not very well defined. The program called for about a 1,500 square foot addition to the cafeteria to provide good seating capacity inside to not only handle the cafeteria needs for the high school student, but also um, the functions of, of the cabaret or the, or the um, jazz uh, uh, ensemble. In some way, to, it's a more of a comfortable performing space than it is now, a more comfortable gathering space for um, sign-up um, uh, orientation night, whatever. Um, and this addition does that. Um, the scheme we're uh, pursuing right now is uh, this one here. I don't know if you can see that. We, we've gone through about 15 different arrangements of these schemes. This is a scheme that has an uh, entry canopy, modest entry canopy, but out in front of you, it, you can see there are uh, four picnic tables, and they'll be on those uh, concrete pads that Tom talked about and, and give us uh, a better to find space out front, and hopefully with tree canopied out front, it, it will be a pleasant place to gather and some protection before you go into a door. Um, this is, illustrates what uh, we think can be done to improve the edge here. Um, the diagram talks about this. This pavement now kind of wanders in here and heads off like that. It's been striped off and it's not, it's not well defined at all. We want to give that an edge to it, um, we want to give this seating area, outside seating area, a, a sense of place again for the students uh, to congregate, and obviously a place of arrival, um, so that um, after hours this can you can directly go to the cafeteria without going through um, what is affectionately called, well it's not well shown here, but it's behind these trees, kind of in under a uh, overhang, and it's, it's not a very pleasant way to get into the building. Uh, we all go there to vote, but uh, we think there's something that can be done to improve at least this uh, presence at that side of the building. Um, so this gives us uh, that definition, and it increases the uh, uh, cafeteria capacity about 1,500 square feet. Those are the two modest additions that are going on at the high school. Um, The Pond Cove addition is also rather modest. It's 8,900 square feet. Um, and as you may know, the objective is to move the, high, the uh, elementary, yeah, the kindergarten folks out of the uh, um, high school and get them back to the K through four facility that we have, or the mission we have to define, the school department wants to define a K through four facility and has wanted that for a long time. This addition that comes off the present lobby um, is a four classroom addition with space for OT and a space for speech and some bathrooms. It's a one story addition and it's strategically located here so that we make use of, a, of the existing elevator. It gives a sense of uh, uh, place in, and gravity to the building, a center of mass, so to speak, by locating this addition with a two-story first and, uh, grade wing on the left and third grade wing on the right, um, so that it's close to the cafeteria, close to the 
um, gym, close to the administration. So that's a really um, better defined it as school. Um, this building, as you know, rambles up the hill and it goes on and on and on. And um, um, I think fundamental to the development of this edition is the notion that um, to continue that theme would be a mistake and that it needs to be, whatever edition was being built needed to be uh, more centrally located and, and served. So it is a uh, uh, four classroom uh, wing as we've talked about. Um, it is being designed to someday, and I don't know when that is, but someday to hold a second floor. And that was uh, e uh, an important mission of this edition, that we would not be short-sighted, and that um, because we already had an elevator there, it was a good location to uh, do double duty for that elevator and uh, uh, service that second floor. Exterior elevations. Um, this would be the view here in the east elevation. This would be a view if you were standing over by uh, the swing set uh, on the very eastern property line here. Um, I'm, we're over here by the town hall. Um, on the left here is the bus circle. Um, a simple, again, these, uh, the motif here that we're trying to develop is really to be very careful with not to compete against the existing building. We're using the same type of bricks, same window patterns, so that this truly becomes the uh, elementary school facility, K through four, that uh, uh, we want it to become. So the, as you can see, again, repeating very much the same window patterns as you see here, uh, brick patterning, sign soldier courses over the uh, windows, a soldier course across the base of the window, uh, base of the uh, building. And as you can see, it does go up and kind of buries itself in the side of the, uh, uh, up towards the side of the uh, third grade classroom wing there uh, as it tucks into the hillside. So uh, that's the essence of the architectural efforts. And uh, with that, we're open to suggestions and questions. Okay. Um, Mr. Greer mentioned the construction schedule on the Pond Cove portion. What's the construction schedule on the cafeteria portion of the high school? When are you shooting for? The schedule calls for completion of uh, construction documents by the end of July. In the meantime, we have been out, we, the uh, building committee and it's a, and a selection committee, has been looking at construction managers um, and have um, started discussions with a chosen um, construction manager to offer services um, for the construction of the uh, high school additions and renovations. That step was taken to uh, primarily out of a number of reasons, uh, but basically to uh, lend assistance to the scheduling processes, um, accommodate the school's academic schedule, uh, be efficient about how we go about this, and um, make sure as we develop the plans, um, the construction managers is bringing estimates along and we know exactly what we're doing as, as far as phasing the work and at what stages what we want to do first and what type of lead times we have for certain items. I don't have a good answer for you as far as when that's all going to happen. That will be coming out of the construction manager's planning effort right. over the next several months. Uh, they're estimating uh, prowess. Um, we hope to have uh, some work done this summer. There may be some asbestos removal going on. We talked to the construction manager very briefly about perhaps the cafeteria addition starting uh, in the good weather of late summer. Um, but all that is still to be planned. Okay. I will tell you it's our wish to have substantial completion um, in 18 months from the date of start. So that would be 18 months from uh, 1st of August. Uh, that would be our wish. All right, thank you. Um, thank you for that uh, review. Uh, it was helpful to see the changes since the workshop. Um, again, for the board's <clears throat> benefit tonight, we are here to consider the issue of completeness and if anyone has questions or concerns on that issue, uh, 
we should raise them now. Anything on, on completeness? Um, I know the one issue that was raised in the memorandum uh, was signage, and I understand that that's still yet to be determined. Uh, I, for one, would not consider that something that should hold up the application in terms of completeness. Obviously, once you have a proposal on that, we'd like to see it, but uh, I understand why there isn't one as yet. And also, the, uh, the sign at the front entrance, at the very entrance to the site, um, one of the drawings say it's to be relocated. We didn't tell you where. We will do that as part of the. the All right. Any, any other issues on completeness on the application? Um, I did take a look at the town engineer's letter, which uh, I believe you've addressed uh, all of those issues. And some of those issues, again, are not matters for completeness in the formal sense, but just need to be addressed, obviously, as the application moves along. Because uh, Public Works maintains these sites, we're trying to work very closely with them and making sure that what we're doing here meets their satisfaction. So by the time we get to a public hearing, we're very, we believe we'll have a very glowing report, or at least a satisfactory report from Public Works on the project. All right, that, that's a good idea. Um, don't, be, don't appear to be any questions on completeness. Do we have a, a motion? Barbara? Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review of an addition to Pond Cove Elementary School and renovations to the high school and related improvements located on Scott Dyer Road and Ocean House Road be deemed complete. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? All right, and that carries. Um, I think there's no question that obviously we would need a public hearing on this uh, next month, so I believe we should schedule that for a public hearing. Uh, in the meantime, we would like to see all the more finalized plans uh, and any other information that's, that comes along. Uh, we do have the traffic study. We have that now as part of the application. Obviously, that will be something we will discuss. Um, so given the fact that obviously this, this is going to have to go to a public hearing next month, uh, we will continue that discussion then. So we have a motion on Yes, Barbara. Uh, be it further order that the above application be tabled to the regular March 16th, 2004 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? And that carries. Thank you, Mr. Greer and Mr. Howe, and uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you very much. We adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you.